In this video, I'm going to go over how to use the ifstream object type in C++ to read the contents of files. The first thing I'll do is include the fstream library, because this is where the ifstream object type is defined. Then we'll make an ifstream object. We'll say ifstream, and we'll call it infile. The first thing we do if we want to read a file is open it. So we'll say infile.open file.txt. And this open function will attempt to open file.txt. Let's make file.txt. We'll put one integer in the file, four. So right now the file looks like this. To read that integer in, we're gonna need some kind of variable to store it in. So we'll make a variable called number. And then we'll use the stream extraction operator to actually pull the number from the file and store it into the number variable. We'll say in file greater than greater than number. So this here is the stream extraction operator. It's gonna pull the number from the file and store it into the number variable. After that, we'll output the number just to make sure we got it. We'll say see out number and line. And then finally, we'll close the file. We'll say in file dot close. So closing the file like this is a best practice when we're done working with the file. It has the effect of freeing up some memory too. So we'll save this and now we'll compile our program. And then if we run it, we should get four as output. And we do. So one thing that could go wrong is that the file fails to open successfully. Maybe the file doesn't exist. For example, if we had here, file does not exist. In this case, we want to detect this and handle it in a graceful way. We can use the fail function to detect this. So here we'll say if in file dot fail is true, do this. So the fail function here is going to return true if the file failed to open. And in that case, we'll tell the user, we'll say see out error opening file, followed by an inline, just so the user knows what went wrong. We'll also return one here to terminate the program. So returning one instead of returning zero to terminate the program is actually a signal to the shell here, to the terminal that something went wrong in the execution of our program. So we'll save this and then we'll recompile our program and we'll run it and we get error opening file. There's actually another situation where the fail function can help us to process a file. And that's a situation where the file is not formatted in the way we expect. So we'll switch this back to file.txt and then we'll try to read another number from the file. So down here we'll say in file greater than greater than number. And we'll try to read a second number from the file and store it into the number variable. But this won't work because our file only has one integer. We can detect this using the fail function. So here we'll say if in file dot fail and we'll say see out error file format incorrect followed by an end line. And again, we'll return one. So if we save this here and then we recompile our program and run it, we get error file format incorrect. So we can detect that issue too. If the file did have two integers in it, say for example, we put a five in the file. In this case, it'll actually be okay. So if we try to run the program now, we just get five here because we read the second number from the file and then we store it into number and then we will put five. So that's how we could use the fail function to handle incorrect file formats. One other helpful function is the EOF function. So the EOF function stands for end of file and it will let us know when we've reached the end of a file. This can be useful in situations where we know how a line is formatted in the file, but we don't know how many lines are in the file, for example. So here we'll say file.txt and we'll edit the contents of it. We'll put 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 3.1, 3.2, 3.3. And we're gonna say that we know every line of the file has three double values, but we don't know how many lines are in the file. And we'll use EOF to help us with this situation. So we'll save the file. And now it looks like this. 
We know it has three lines, but we're going to say that we don't know how many lines there could be there. And we'll comment out this code here for now. We'll make three double variables to store the values on each line. So we'll say double x1, x2, and x3. And then we'll have a while loop. We'll say while true, try to read in those values. So we'll say in file, x1, x2, and x3. Eventually though, this is not going to work. We're going to detect that this is not going to work using the EOF function. So we'll say if in file dot EOF is true. If we're at the end of the file, then we're going to break. And that will terminate the while loop. Otherwise, we'll just output the values of x1, x2, and x3. So we'll say else C out x1 space x2 space x3 and then an end line. So we'll save this and we'll compile our program and we'll give this a try. So after we recompile and then run the program, our output is the file contents. We could also store the contents of the file in something like a 2D array, and then we could access those values later. Let's go over an example of that. Again, we'll comment out this example here, and then we'll make a 2D array. We'll say double A33. So this 2D array can store three rows and three columns, which is going to be enough to store the contents of this file. Next, we'll say int i is equal to zero. I'm going to have to have a counter variable to keep track of which row in the array am I currently in, because we're going to store each one of these three values into each column of the 2D array at each row in the 2D array. We'll make a while loop to go through the file. And I'm going to do things slightly differently than the last one. Here I'll say while in file AI zero, AI one and AI two. And then here I plus plus. So what's going on here is that we're using the stream extraction operator to store the three values at each line in the file into the three columns at each row in this 2D array. So this zero index, one index, and two index, those are the columns. This here is the ith row. And we're incrementing i each time the while loop runs. So that way each time we store these values into the next row of the 2D array. Now it's kind of interesting that we have this expression as our while loop condition. So the reason we're doing that is that when this fails, because there's no more data to read, this expression will evaluate to false. So long as the data has been read correctly though, this expression will evaluate to true. So in other words, we're using this statement here as a condition to detect when we're done reading data from the file. Otherwise we just keep reading data from the file and storing it into the 2D array. Now, if we do it this way with storing the data into the 2D array, we would have to access it and do something with it later. Like for example, outputting the data. So we'll make a loop to do that. So here I'm going to make a loop. This is just going to output the data in the 2D array. So I'll say four in J is equal to zero. J is less than three J plus plus. And we'll just output each row of data. We'll say C out AJ zero followed by a space C out AJ one followed by a space C out AJ two followed by an end line. So here we have a for loop that's going to use the counter variable J and take it from zero up until, but not including three by one to take us over each row of the 2D array. And for each row in the 2D array, we're going to print out those three values in each of the columns. So we'll save this and we'll give this a try. 
we'll recompile the program and then we'll run it. And we get very similar output as before. We're outputting the contents of the file. I put an extra space here, but that didn't really need to be there. We're just getting the contents of the file basically as output. Let's do one more thing. Let's try to work with a file that has a string in it. And I'll comment out all this code here. So let's say that our file has a string in it. We'll modify it so it does. Let's add the string, this is a string. And look at the file now. It has, this is a string in it. So far what we've noticed is that these space characters in a file delineate and separate the different values in the file. So for example, when reading in this number here, the stream extraction operator will stop here. And that's gonna be the endpoint of this number. How is that gonna work if we try to read in a string, where a string may naturally have spaces in it, say to separate words? We'll try that and see what happens. So here we'll say string line, and we'll try to read in the line. We'll say in file greater than greater than line. And then we'll try to output the line followed by an end line. We'll recompile the program and we'll run it. And we just get this. So what's going on here is that with strings, as it is with other values, these space characters are gonna separate and delineate values that we're extracting from in file. So what we've gotta do is use a different function. We'll comment out this and we'll use the get line function. So here we'll say get line in file line. And we'll use this function if we wanna read in a string that has spaces like this. So if we save this, recompile our program and run it, we get this is a string. So this has been the basics of how to read in files using the IF stream object type in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.